Today we are going to talk about the VMV1A1 Class A amplifier and I will start the video by saying if you have efficient speakers you should seriously consider one. Now you might not be familiar with the VMV1 brand think of it as the SMSL premium line. Usually when we talk about Class A we think of big expensive heavy amplifiers that runs hot enough to heat your home during winter. In fact, a comment I see all the time is, you can cook an egg on a Class A amp. You know what, actually, I was planning to try to cook an egg on the amp for today's video, but I'm too busy to do it, else I would have tried it. Too bad, it would have been fun, because this unit does get hot. Now there's a temperature indicator in front, and mine runs around 45 degrees Celsius all the time. Not as hot as the Wilsonton R800i, that's a tube integrated amp. That one, you can burn an egg on the transformer. That's a Class A amp. Over the years, I did get a chance to try a few Class A amps. But as I mentioned, they're big, expensive, and they do get really hot. For example, I had the past Lab X30.5 at one point. Now that amp was over $5,000, big, weights 32 kilogram. That's about 80 cans of Coke. And it does get pretty warm. So I thought it was a joke when Hi-Fi Express sent me this VMV A1 and call it a Class A amp. First of all, it's not heavy, only two kilogram. So that translates to about five cans of Coke instead of 80 cans. Not expensive, about 650 USD. Not big, the size of a regular SMSL DAC but it does get hot. Well, at least it has that characteristic of a Class A amp where it gets hot. So why did I start the video telling you to seriously consider it? That is because this unit is surprisingly good. And today, let's talk about it. Now before we begin, a bit thank you to Hi-Fi Express for sending me this unit. Now apparently SMSL is a big shareholder of this online store. I guess that is why I was able to get a bit more information on this unit that is not listed anywhere online. For example, is this amp truly Class A or like the shit Azure, Class A-ish? Also, I noticed if you look at the official SMSL website, they only link to this online store. So if you would like to give this unit a try, consider ordering from them. Now, in the interest of being transparent, I am not getting paid for this video, nor would there be any affiliated links. But they are not getting this SMSL A1 back. So let's go over specs quickly. This is rated at 10 watts into 8 ohm and 15 watts into 4 ohm. Now, this does not sound like much, but it drove uh, most of my speakers okay. Some would consider it an integrated amp because it has a digital volume control. Now, what people might not know, since it is not published anywhere, and I had to ask Hi-Fi Express, is that this amp goes into pure amp mode if you set the volume to 66, 67, or 68. Once in pure amp mode, the sound stage should improve. Now, I had my audio buddies, Mr. Vintage and Lowick, try that, and they confirmed that it does, sounds, it does sound different in their system when they put the A1 into amp mode. In Mr. Vintage's system, uh, his experience told me that the singer is more upfront from the instruments and the image is more solid in amp mode. Next, the circuit is Class A. The bias current is very high, so it is close to Class A, but not exactly Class A. The problem is heat, but there's a potential meter inside that allows you to adjust to 100% Class A. So I was thinking, hey man, if I'm good at DIY and I can build a chassis that has a big, big heat sink, I can, in theory, take the module out of this VMB A1 and put it in my DIY chassis and bias it to pure Class A. Regardless, the point is that it is biased high enough to have the Class A sound. And once again, 
This information I got from Hi-Fi Express because they have a direct connection to SMSL. So how does it sound? Now it does have that class 8 sound characteristic. Now I know a lot of you think that uh, class A is the best sound or might think, okay? A for the best, D for the worst, class D is the devil. But I would guess myself, most people would prefer the class AB sound over the class A sound. In fact, my audio buddies, Mr. Vintage and Mr. Quant, have told me in the past they are not a big fan of class A sound. Now, Mr. Quant loves the class A mid-range, but not the bass. You see, class A sound for me is overall lean. You don't have that bloated fat bass. The mid-range has a clean lean, has a certain leanness, but it has body. So for those of you who are not used to this kind of presentation, you might find it thin. As I said, it is not thin because there's a lot of body, but you have to keep that in mind. Class A overall presentation is usually on the lean side. What is nice about Class A sound, and the reason I enjoyed it, is because there is a certain linearity to the mid-range, lifelike. That is a bit different than a typical Class A B M. Okay guys, I am generalizing here, and that, this is also just my experience. So this amp does have a nice linear mid-range with body. I remember the first day when I tried it. I swapped it out with my Yamaha WXA50 Class D integrated amp. The first second I noticed, Right away is the mid-range, it's more forward, unlike the Class D amp that is a bit recessed. The VMV A1 top end, although overall it's not bright, it can however be at times a tad sharp. It sparkles enough that it does not feel veil, like there's a veil in front of it. Bass is surprisingly strong for an amp rated at 10 watt, and I do get surprised from time to time on how much bass I get from it. It is actually fast enough to handle some of the more complex tracks I throw at it. The key here is bass is adequate. Soundstage is surprisingly big, well, big enough, and it has okay depth. For me, Class A amps are not usually sweet sounding. It is lean and clean, which you will find with the A1. Also, Class A amp for me are not warm sounding. Now, I had a discussion with my audio buddy, Russ, about this, okay? Because sometimes we might confuse warm sounding, where the upper bass is a bit slightly tilted up, versus full body sounding, where I defined it as not thin, has a bit of weight, and not recessed. So this is how I would overall summarize how the A1 sounds. So before I move on to why you should buy this unit, let me go over a few things that you should be aware of before buying it, like, like the negatives, right? First, you need to use good interconnects with this amp. Now, I was hearing some static from the speakers in your field in the beginning with the SMSL Tababuya speakers. I confirmed this with SMSL and they were able to reproduce this problem. The solution turns out that I needed to use good shielded interconnects. Very interesting because this is the first time I, I come across a problem like this. Second, the thing gets kind of hot, so we don't know how that impacts the long-term reliability. Third, the binding posts are so close together that it can be annoying for some of you. Finally, which is the most important, is the sound. You see, remember, this is not a fat sounding amp. So the problem with any lean sounding amp is it can get a bit shouty when you push the volume, especially if you don't have warm sounding speakers or maybe your speakers are known to be on the bright side. Now, I'm not saying it will, but there is that danger. DAC and preamp pairing is so, so important with this amp. You see, I, I'm really sensitive to listening fatigue. Now, although this is not a bright amp, because its mid-range is not recessed, I noticed with certain speakers and DAC pairing, the upper mids can sound a bit string when I push the volume. Sometimes there is a hint of harshness there. Now, this really depends on the DAC and speaker you pair it with. For me, to get the best sound, I had to pair it with the Shit Freya tube amp. Now, the one I have is the first generation with new old stock tubes. 
but probably any good preamp will do. If you connect the A1 directly to the DAC, it can get a bit bright depending on the DAC. For example, when I paired it with the Totem Sky Tower SMSL D1 SE DAC with standard settings, and I connected it directly to the VMV A1 amp, I noticed, yeah, that combo is a bit too bright for my taste, especially once I push it past uh, 70 dB volume. So you might encounter this issue with your setup, depending on your DAC and speakers. Now, you can get smoother and more musical performance if you paired it with the SMSL M400 or the i5, I think it's the Nano DAC, i5, well, one of that i5 DAC I have. Now, I like adding a tube preamp because it rounds off the rough edges and for me that brings the performance to the next level remember i mentioned there can be a slight strain or glare in the upper mids well it is completely eliminated by adding a tube preamp in the chain so why should you consider this amp for one it gives you a taste of class the class a sound without needing you to take a loan from the bank Sure, you can get a tube amp like the inexpensive Ryzen A12 tube integrated amp to experience the Class A sound. Heck, I would even argue the mids on the A12 is probably smoother than this VMV A1. However, with the A1, well, you don't have to deal with tubes. The A1 is more refined, more powerful, and more dynamic. Mm -hmm. You can play louder, and you can drive a lot more different speakers with it. And finally, you have more authority in the bass with this A1. When I use the VMV A1 with the Shed Freya, um, the performance does elevate beyond the Ryzen A12 level. But of course, you know, that combo is a lot more expensive. Sure, this A1 might not have the fluidity of my $4,000 amp, but you will never guess it is a $650 amp if I did not tell you. So let me tell you a story. You see, I lent this A1 to all my audio buddies. I remember my audio buddy, Mr. Jazz, okay? He emailed me all excited about this amp and he said, I quote, the SMSL amp is wow, a big wow. How can a small box like this sound so good? I compared it with my $5,000 tube integrated amp that uses 211 tubes and it makes my amp sounds dull and uninteresting. I need to spend more time with it. Thanks for sharing with me. Okay, now keep in mind, he is not saying it is better than his $5,000 integrated amp because later when we chat about it, he said, despite his tube amp not having the clarity of the VMV A1, his tube amp is smoother, more powerful, and have more headroom. Now, what I found interesting with him in this case, he did not know the price of the A1. And he was shocked when I told him. Okay, uh, also, but please keep in mind his experience is on a super efficient 96 dB plus $6,000 speaker. So his experience might not be yours. Another reason why you should consider it is because it has good detail. Perhaps of the linear nature of the Class A amp, information is more balanced. So it is easy for me to hear each instrument and make out what they are. Imaging may not be top notch with the A1, okay? But instrument separation is pretty good. Soundstage is also no joke with this amp. So let's move on to another reason why you should consider this. Mm, even with speakers that are not easy to drive, it can still sound pretty good as long as you don't push the volume. Now that I did not expect from a 10 watt amp, right? 10 watt. I guess class A 10 watt feels different than class D 10 watt. Who knows? Ideally with speakers that are not efficient, I found them okay around maybe or below 72 dB. If I push it higher, I might hear that slight harshness or string in the upper mid, especially when I don't have a tube preamp in the chain. Now, I did try with a few speakers to see how well it performed. So, with the Klipsch 600, RP600M, the Q Acoustic Concept 500, and the Triangle Bro 3, it sounded good. Now, I did wish it was less bright with the Bro 3, but the Bro 3, the Triangle Bro 3, 
Bro 3, I got is brand new, so it was not broken in yet. Now, as long as I don't push the volume too high with the Bro 3, it sounded okay. With the SMSL Tabla Buya speaker, which I've reviewed, in near view, it has no problem driving it despite being only rated at 88 dB. Now, with easier speakers to drive, this is where the VMB A1 starts to shine and opens up. Now, with my 93 dB Silverline Sonata, it sounded fantastic. I also tried it on my XM Player single driver, 96 dB plus speaker. It sounded excellent. Now, this was a bit surprising for me because that XM Player speaker is not easy to match. I struggle a bit with matching my tube amps with it. So I was kind of surprised that it paired well with this VMV A1 with the Freya. Since I mentioned gear matching to get the best sound, I did ask SMSL for a preamp to go with the A1. The reason I asked is because Topping sent me the pre-90 preamp and I was hoping SMSL had a preamp too. Now they don't have one, but they sent me their new DAC called the D1SE. This is part of the VMB line, so it is their premium product. Now, instead of making a dedicated video on this DAC, I'm just going to mention about this DAC in this video because these days, man, there are too many videos on DACs. These days, all the DACs I get perform really well. Not to mention all these DACs, you know, they measure like their life dependent on it. Every DAC from Asia wins the next best measure DAC award. So to get a good DAC from Asia is an expectation these days, right? I expect good detail, good soundstage, bass, speed, and so forth. And this D1SE, yeah, it did deliver. Now behind the scene, I have my audio buddy, Mr. Kwan, create this Excel file comparing all the DACs we have. If we score this D1SE objectively, the final score that we got is really not much different than our own reference $4,000 DAC from yesterday. So whether you would choose this D1SE or not is really a question of taste. I borrow uh, the older SMSL M400 DAC to just quickly compare how it is with this new DAC. Now in short, compared to the M400, the new D1SE DAC is more revealing, cleaner, sharper, and more detailed. It has good timing and there are a lot of customization options. For example, on top of able to choose the different curves that comes with the ESS9038 DAC chip, I can fine tune the color of the sound with the DSP of the DAC. I notice it is possible to get this DAC to sound like a bit softer and more musical by playing with the settings. So in short, I would choose this DAC if I want maximum clarity and detail while having the ability to, to fine tune or customize the sound to a certain degree. As Mr. Quad put it, this DAC is excellent regardless of price. So let's end today's video. The Combo D1 SE DAC and the A1 Amp will give you a really forward sound, so speaker matching is important. Ideally, I would recommend pairing a tube preamp with it. Now I've recorded a sound demo, so you, know, you can judge for yourself. So for this uh, video, I lend this VMV A1 to six of my audio buddies, including me. Five of us found it amazing. Two of us found it eh, just okay. Now Mr. Counter found it just okay, but the problem is none of his speakers are easy to drive. Now he did get a chance to try it on the Sound Artist, 6, uh, Sound Artist SC65, and he thought it was okay. Russ who owns efficient speakers like Omega, Zoo, and Klipsch, thought it was good sounding, but it was, he was not blown away by it because he, he said, you know, at this price, there are other Class D alternatives that you can look into that has better value. You know, those Class D amp usually comes with a DAC. Now, keep in mind though, Russ only owns Class A amps, so, he didn't get a chance to do like to A-B test this A1 against a class D amp. Now I will finish the video with Loic's story. Now Loic probably was the most surprised and excited. He tried it on the Tekton 210 speakers and for him, even when running in integrated amp mode, it is the clear winner compared to all the budget integrated amps I've lent him. For him, the SMSL A1 is tight, defined and not aggressive. Sure. 
there are times with certain recordings it can be a tad sharp but when it compares to the shit Azure that he had the SMSL is a step up for him especially when he paired it with a good tube preamp he was shocked at the special airy feel of the soundstage and this is very surprising coming from an amp the size of a manga book now before you shit Azure owners start throwing eggs at me I have not heard the SMSL like with the Azure side by side so I don't know which one is better regardless of what Loic's assessment is I think we can at least assume that the Azure and A1 given both are biased heavily into class A are performing at least in the same ballpark now this is good news for us because it means we have more choices right especially for those of you who own super efficient speakers like Zoo, Tecton, Klipsch man this is a no-brainer this is one of the most surprising gear I've tested this year and uh, I think uh, it's definitely worth for a lot of you to give it a try you see most of us well I shouldn't say most of us I say if some of you who only have listened to class ABM all your life and you want something different right you want a change this is a change okay so with that said I'll see you next time Thank you.